Hello, I'm Harold Jones, Dean of the School of Health Professions at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Thanks for joining us for another discussion in our continuing monthly series where we interview experts in our school. These experts are leaders helping to shape the future of health care through tailoring innovative solutions to real world problems. Today we will be talking with Lynn Holt. Lynn is the director of the genetic counseling program in the UAB Department of Clinical and Diagnostic Sciences. She was in clinical practice in UAB's Department of Genetics for 11 years and has extensive clinical experience in prenatal, pediatric, and cancer genetics. Thank you for joining us today, Lynn. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about the profession of genetic counseling and about what services genetic counselors provide to the patients. Genetic counseling is a process of helping individuals know their risk for genetic disease and understanding and adapt to that risk. Um, genetic counselors work primarily in three areas. Prenatal genetics with high risk pregnancies at risk potentially for a um, sporadic or known familial genetic condition. Pediatrics with individuals with developmental delay or disabilities that may or may not run in the families. And then in cancer, um, individuals that come from families with multiple cancers early onset and identifying those that may have a genetic factor associated with them. Under what circumstances is a patient likely to be referred to a genetic counselor? Well, some of our gen um, patients are identified through primary care physicians, pediatricians sometimes will identify a child um, in their practice, and then of course OBGYN doctors that have um, individuals in their practice that um, have either a, a blood test or a family history that suggests a genetic condition will get referred to us. And then some people are self-referred. They read things on the internet or they do some investigation on their own and they, and they call and they actually ask to see us. So not everyone has a referral. Um, some people um, come straight to us and then we work back with their physician to help make a plan based on what we may or may not discover in terms of genetic risk factors. If a patient is referred to you, what would they expect to have happen when they first come in the door? So when we first meet with someone, it's important to establish with them what their expectations are of the visit. A lot of people are unsure what to expect from genetic counseling and a genetics appointment. Um, so we try to put them at ease and help them understand what we can offer and what we're there for. And then the family history is really an important piece of where we start our session to understand the individual as well as the family context, which includes all the genetic information that we might be able to collect. And then that guides our session and our, our risk assessment. When you're trying to get a family medical history, what are some of the questions or the information that would be the most valuable to you as a genetic counselor to have? So when we're collecting family medical histories, we generally like to collect what we call three generation pedigrees, which are, um, if an individual has children, it would be everybody in their generation, their cousins, brothers and sisters, first cousins, and then their children in that generation, and then up to their parents. Um, or if they're someone without children, it would be their parents' generation and their grandparents. And from that, we like to collect all of the individuals um, that have been born, their age um, at the time of death, we collect information about um, chronic health conditions, the ages that they were diagnosed, and if they contributed to their death. Um, and that's important to us because many genetic conditions or even common conditions with a genetic component may have an earlier age of onset than you would expect in the general population. And, um, and we can also, when we collect multiple generations, um, identify patterns that might suggest inheritance patterns like a dominant or recessive condition that we might be able to offer testing for. A lot of people would not know their medical history or their family medical history, especially three generations back. How would an individual maybe get started in trying to pull together that information? Some people um, have the benefit of having a family historian, someone in their family that's done a lot of genealogy work or just seems to know everybody, um, or a family Bible that has a lot of information. Um, so generally what we recommend is for people to kind of draw out what they know about their family and then to go back and ask specific family members that may be knowledgeable about questionable or, or fuzzy areas that they're unsure of. 
Um, and it's important when you ask these questions that it's sensitive to the fact that um, there may be issues, uh, still people that are dealing with grief over a loss of a, a parent, a child, a sibling. Um, so you want to approach these questions in a way that um, folks understand you're collecting this information really for the family a lot of times to know medical information that might help everyone um, identify some risk factors or things that they could do um, to help optimize their health. It would seem like family gatherings are a good time to pull together some of this family medical history. But at the same time, I would think that some people might be a little reluctant to talk about uh, their family medical history under certain circumstances. How would you go about using those family gatherings as a way of gaining family medical history? Generally, we wouldn't recommend doing it at meal time. Um, it would be better to do in a more casual environment after um, maybe one-on-one -on -one discussions instead of in a large group discussion broadcasting to a whole group. And ask really um, pointed questions about individuals. So tell me about your sister, Aunt Margaret, that I never met. Um, I understand she had diabetes or my understanding is she died at a, at a young age before I was born. What, what do you know about that? And, and really coming at it from a way that you are asking questions that you want to hear the family story. A lot of people like to talk about relatives and, and can share it for you if they're sharing that information about that individual versus just collecting dates of birth and death and list of medical conditions. Um, they're more likely to open up and have that conversation. But you also have to be prepared that they, it could be upsetting and some people just don't want to talk about it, especially if they perceive that there's some kind of um, negative connotation to whatever they may have died from or whatever disease they may have suffered from, they may be very limited in talking about um, the information that they have or they just might not know. There are many families that have family secrets um, and um, that don't share information or talk freely about it because of some embarrassment that they may have that really is, is not necessarily something that has anything to do with um, why you're asking the question, but it can arise as an issue when you try to have that conversation. It seems like it might be very difficult to get all of the family medical history that you would want to have, but it also seems like it would be helpful to get as much as you can. Is that correct? So, so yes, the more information you can collect and the more thorough the information is, the easier it is to, like I say, identify specific patterns of risk. Um, you know, when you sketch it out and even we work with families and we put it all down on paper, a lot of people go, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that at this much diabetes was in my family or that there was such early onset heart disease. I knew a lot of people on that side of the family had heart defects but or heart disease but I didn't re realize that they were diagnosed at 40 or 50. Um, and then from a genetic counseling standpoint, genetics assessment, we can look at that and help identify what potential conditions might be associated with that. And so the more complete we have, and complete on mom and dad's side, a lot of times the paternal history is um, not as thorough as the maternal history because um, sometimes men don't talk as much about their families um, or don't ask as many questions as women tend to. Um, and sometimes people only ask um, their mom's side of the family because they identify that as a major risk factor. But it's important to remember you get genetic information from both your mom and your dad, so we need all of that information to make a full family history assessment. If you're in the process of putting together a family medical history for yourself or for someone else in your family, are there resources out there that one can use in order to help you with that process? Yes, the Surgeon General has a website for collection of family history that is a free uh, website that you can input family history data, um, individuals' names, date of birth, medical history, as well as date of death, and then it will um, actually draw out a pedigree for you. Then you can use that as a tool to take back to your physician um, if you have questions and also to, for your personal reasons to collect the information over time. Um, and then the National Society of Genetic Counselors has um, information about family history collection on their website also. Um, and there's a lot of information, especially in November, because that's Family History Collection Month, and so um, there's some good resources on the internet for that. Once again, Lynn, thank you for uh, giving us your time today and giving us this valuable information about ways that we can go about improving our health status. Thank you for having me. If you have any questions or comments about this topic, please feel free to contact us at uab.edu slash 
shp slash contact. And while you're on our website, be sure to learn more about our school. Once again, thank you for joining us. I'm Harold Jones, Dean of the UAB School of Health Professions, shaping the future of healthcare through tailoring innovative solutions to real-world problems.